Hey, I'm Pastor Eric Johns from the Buffalo Dream Center, and it's great to be with you at the BDC podcast, and uh, we're happy that you're joining us today. Uh, before I get started on today's teaching, I just want to mention that um, you, if you live in the Buffalo area, you can volunteer with us, and it's really easy. If you go to our website or you scan the QR code, which will bring you to our website and many other places, um, uh, social media places and things like that. Uh, you can find out when we have volunteer hours. It's very simple to, to look up and to see. And we've got something almost every day of the week. We have times when we're feeding our friends from the streets. Uh, we have uh, uh, children's programs and, and uh, different outreaches that we're doing, especially in the summer months. Uh, there's lots to do, but even all year round, we have we have a lot that uh, you can be involved with. And it, all of our... Uh, Volunteer opportunities are really family friendly. Even working at our outreach center, which is like a warehouse, uh, we will assemble bags of groceries and we'll have to do that. Maybe we'll have to make five or 600 bags of groceries on uh, one afternoon or one morning. And all of that will be on our website. And all of these are things that uh, you can bring your family to uh, to volunteer. And we appreciate uh, we appreciate it because we can't really do it all just with our church congregation. We need people from other churches and other organizations or just families to come and to join us. So uh, thank you for that in advance. If you're going to come and join us and volunteer with us as we reach the people of the inner city of Buffalo, New York. But we are on podcast number five of this series that we're doing, Building Your Life. And we've uh, been talking about building your life because Jesus said that there was a man that built his house on the sand and the storm came and blew the house down. And there was another man who built his house on the rock. And he was a wise man, Jesus said. He heard Jesus' sayings and he did them. And that made him wise. And he built his house on a rock. And that same storm came, but his house stood. And the Bible is clear that the house represents your life. So you're going to have to build your life. And you want to build your life on the right foundation. And also you want to build your life so that you're living the life that God has for you. Uh, you want to live the best life that God has for you. In whatever way that is, it really has to do with pursuing God's call for your life, his will for your life. Isn't it great to know when you put your head down at night to go to sleep that I'm right where God wants me to be. I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. And you can have that. Uh, but you're going to have to build it. You're going to have to work towards that. And uh, that's what we've been looking at because Nehemiah was a builder. And uh, we're looking at the principles that he used to rebuild the broken down walls of Jerusalem. Those same principles, we're taking them and we're saying we're, we are going to uh, build our lives. So we're going to go to Nehemiah. Uh, the, we're going to start this time from Nehemiah 2 and verse 10. Here, here's what it says here. It says, When Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. Now, here's a. this is probably one of the most important points of our series, is when you make up your mind that you're going to live the life that God wants you to live, and you're going to build that life, not everybody's going to be happy with you. You might think everybody's going to be so happy with my decision to pursue what God has for my life, but there are going to be people that are not going to be happy. Now, there are going to be people who are going to be unhappy with you, even angry with you, if you're seeking the welfare of other people. That's what Nehemiah said. He was looking out for others. He was trying to help others. And uh, you said, really? People would actually be mad that I'm trying to help other people? Yeah, let me tell you why. And some of you have experienced this. When you come to Jesus and you stop living selfishly, you're not living for yourself anymore and you start living for others, not all your friends are going to like that. Now, why don't you come and party with us anymore? Why don't you come and do this with us anymore? Why don't, you know, because I'm living my life differently and I'm living my life for others and my priorities begin to change. And so not everybody's going to be happy about it. So Nehemiah, he goes to Jerusalem and he's there for the welfare of others. 
and already he has opposition. When you pursue the call of God on your life and the life that God wants you to live, you're going to have opposition. And uh, so just know that that's going to happen. Not all of this is going to be easy. So Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem and in the middle of the night, he does a survey of all the broken down walls, the gates that have been destroyed and burned by fire, because he has only heard about it. He hasn't seen any of it for himself yet. He just heard the news about it and he was stirred up in his heart to do something. So now he's looking at it for the first time himself. That gives us our next point. If you're going to build the life that God wants you to have, you're going to have to take a personal inventory of your life. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to look at your life and you're going to have to be honest. You know, and many times we look at our life and we're dishonest with things about ourselves. And you've got to be honest with yourself after you evaluate your life. Now, so let's read, let's keep going in Nehemiah chapter two. And we're going to look at verse here, 17. It says, then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. So Nehemiah is stirring up the people to rebuild the walls. He's saying, look, I've surveyed the walls. Let's rebuild so we're no longer a reproach. So now let's bring that into our own lives. I've taken an inventory of my life. <clears throat> I've seen some things that God wants to change. He wants to do different in my life. So there's two reasons to build the life that God wants you to build. There's two reasons that we get from this verse. Number one, for protection. See, Nehemiah was building the walls to protect the children of Israel from the enemy. And the more you build your life, the stronger it becomes and the more protected you are. So what do you mean by that? Well, the the more you build your marriage, the more protected it gets. The more you build your finances, the more protected it gets. So well, protection from what? Well, from enemies. You have an enemy. You have an enemy that, that wants to steal from you, wants to destroy you. And so this, it protects you when you build it. So that's number one. Number two is for separation. Number one is for protection. Number two is for separation. Let me say it to, to you this way. If you build the better life or the life that God wants you to have, you keep the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. That's one of the things that you're going to be doing. When you build your life, it keeps the enemy out and it keeps you living right. It keeps the good stuff in. Nehemiah 2.18 he said, it says, and I told them of the hand of God, which had been good upon me. So Nehemiah, now he's meeting with the people. And I mean, these are broken people. These are fearful people. These are hurting people. This is the, you know, and he's going to use these people to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which he does miraculously in 52 days. But He's first of all kind of stirring them up and saying, listen, we're rebuilding for two reasons, for protection and for separation. So you've got to stir yourself up after you take inventory of your life to stir yourself up and say, all right, I'm going to do it to protect me and separate me so that uh, my, my life can be protected from the enemy. Then Nehemiah, he says to them, I told them of the hand of my God, which had been upon me. So we get our next point here. If you want to build a better life for the life God has for you, then you must believe that God's hand is upon you for good. In other words, I'm going to expect something good to happen in my life because the hand of God is upon me. It's living life with an expectation. That'll help you to build your life. So I'm going to expect, as the pastor of the Dream Center, that something good is going to happen at the Dream Center because of the hand of God is upon me, right? 
So expect that God's going to start to do good things. Expect as you put in the effort in areas of your life where the Holy Spirit is, is speaking to you, that God is going to do good things. Then Nehemiah 2.18, he says this. So, so or they, the people said, they said, let us rise up and build. So the response to the people when Nehemiah told them the hand of God's on me to do this, we can expect something good because God is in this. The people said, all right, let's rise up and build. So if the hand of God is upon you, then you're going to rise up and, and, and do it. So if you can wake up every day, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to wake up every day and know that God is on your side, that he's not against you, that he's for you, that he's working with you, that the Holy Spirit's your partner, he's your helper, he's your comforter. He's, gonna, he's coming alongside of you to make sure that the plan of God is fulfilled for your life, that God has not abandoned you, that you're not there all on your own, but that God is working together with you. So you get up in the morning with an expectation. God is good. Good things are going to happen to me. The hand of God is upon my life. I tell, I'm preaching now because I'm getting excited that that's how we should be. And that you should be your confession over your life. You know, that you are, that God is going to do good things. And then it says, after the people said, let us rise up and build. So they're stirred up to do it. Then it says this in Nehemiah 2.18. Again, it says, then they set. And the word set means strengthened. They set or strengthened their hands to this good work. What do we get from that? If you want to build a better life, you're going to have to strengthen your hands. You're going to have to strengthen your hands. What does that mean? The word strengthen in the Hebrew means to be courageous. I like this next one. To seize the moment. I like that. To seize the moment. To be constant. Or to make yourself hard. To make yourself hard. So what does that mean? All right, so let me put it to you in instead of King James Version, Pastor Eric Version. You can't be a sissy and build a better life. <laughs> you can't be a cream puff. <laughs> you know, you've, you've got to strengthen yourself. You know, there's a, I mean, everybody's born a baby, and I know a lot of uh, male babies. And then they grow up to be males, but a lot of them never grow up to be men. And you can be a boy, but never be a man. You know, physically you can, but, but then uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, with your responsibilities in life. And so what is, what is God saying here? He said, listen, if you're going to build your life, you're going to have to be a man. And even the women, you're going to have to be tough. You're going to have to say, all right, it's time for me to step up. It's time for me to step up and do what God's called me to do. And that, and that you could use that for a person. You can use that for a church. There's times in the, lives of a, uh, the life of a church where they got to seize the moment, where they have to say, all right, now's the time. We've got to step up. You know, now's the time to do what God's called us to do. We've got to seize the moment. So you've got to stir yourself up and say, all right, I'm going to be, and I'm going to be hard. Making yourself hard means that you, you, there's going to be things that are come against you, but you can't quit every time somebody offends you or every time uh, something happens or you have a financial setback or the enemy attacks uh, and you can't be like every day. I, I just go, I want to give up. I want to quit. I want to, you, you can't be like that. You've got to be, you got to be hard. You got to be determined. You got to be strengthened to say, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And now's the time to do it. I feel like there's people watching today or listening that say, you, you, now's the time for you to seize the moment. I mean, it's now or never. You've got to do it. 
You know, there's times in our life where we can do that. You know, for our church, um, we've been around now for 30 years and there's different moments where we seize the opportunity to do things. I remember with building orphanages in India that we seized the moment and did it. That's a whole nother story. Uh, there were, but you know, the biggest thing was uh, really for us was 2020. When COVID hit and churches were shutting down, we decided we're going to stay open and we're going to seize the moment and we're going to reach more people for Christ than we ever had before. And during that time, our church multiplied and it grew and, and all those people, pretty much all those people that joined us in 2020 are still with us today and they're solid, dedicated members of our church. And that's exciting because, you know, we decided now's the time for us to step up as a church and we seize the moment. But you got to do that in your life. Are you going to seize the moment? Are you going to do what God's called you to do? Are you going to say, all right, now's the time to be stirred up to do it? I hope so. And I hope these podcasts are helping you to do that, to build the life that God wants you to have. I hope you're stirred up today to say, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to start to do the first steps to pursue the call and the destiny of God and to live the life that God has for me. Well, God bless you. It's been awesome uh, being with you again. We will see you next week and we look forward to it. Thank you so much for listening today.